Okay, hello all you people out there, this is Michael the Two Half Stooges, and welcome back to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Ron's brother Charlie had arranged to collect the dragon from the tower and return him to Romania. So, how yeah, that cut seems to do with Norbert. Now we have to get back down the Forbidden Tower. Alright, so, uh, Forbidden Forest, Forbidden Tower, Forbidden everything in this game, and now I just realized that. Anyway, so this is not really going to be the same thing as, uh, coming up, fortunately, except for this first part. Filch is going to be prowling around here still, so it's just like nothing's happened, and he thinks nobody's gone into the tower. I really don't know why he cares, because it's like this tower with a opening at the top where you have classes at midnight on Wednesdays or something like that. But, here's Mr. Norris. Um, I don't know, he's gonna start going through some other parts of the library. Um, it's, this is actually kind of interesting, I'll go ahead and spoil this, but you do see this part of the library later in the game. Um, in the cutscene at least, so that's kind of interesting. So, he's going to go through the door and it's going to close, and somehow magically a lock is gonna form, even though Filch is a squib who doesn't know magic, as we learn in the second book. Um, yeah, I know way too much about this series, this kind of... What have I been doing with my life? Anyway, so there's nothing really for us to do up there, so we're just going to go and open that lock. Um, we're going to come down here. Uh, we are going to follow Filch through here. Oh, come on, I was totally through that door when it closed. And, um... Yeah, so, uh, what is going on now? Aha! Uh -huh. I've heard you for sure this time. Quick, Mrs. Norris. You keep watch from above. Alright, keep the cat away from me, because I'm, like, really allergic and it's not fun. Alright, so Phil's is going to be somewhere. Mrs. Norris is going to be up in the top of the bookshelves. Um, yeah, it just kind of looked like there should have been something in there, but I guess not. Um, this thing with that Lependo symbol on it, I don't know why a bookshelf has a Lependo symbol on it, but then again, this is a video game, and... This is a video game based on a movie that's based on a book, so you can't really expect it to explain itself that well. Mrs. Norris, oh, go the other way, yeah, because, like, if I sneeze and give Harry away here, then that's that has to be the stupidest way to get caught in this of all time, especially since you can't actually get caught like that. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that now, because I don't even know where I was going with that. So, alright, so we have gotten right above Filter's head, and apparently he can't hear us walking around. Um, Harris pretty good at keeping silent, I see. Uh, or maybe, maybe the cloak has some, like, dimming sound effects thing. Alright, so we can go and, um, right behind his back, go and open that door. And, of course, he didn't hear it open, but he's going to hear it close. And, um, yeah, same as the last six or seven times, he's gonna go and find a hole in the wall and he's gonna go through it like, Filch, why are you not telling me these shortcuts? I could be going, I could be getting out of the library faster. I could be going, like, I could be going back to bed faster. Anyway, so that's a save book. Probably not a bad idea to hit it, since this game saves pretty quickly. Is that even what I said, like, earlier in this playthrough, like, avoid the save books because this game is slow? I don't even know. It probably is, because it's kind of a random thing I pull out and want you to like that. Anyway, so Filch is gonna be walking around again. Um, we have ourselves here a pretty big part of the library. Um, I don't believe there's anything for us if we go down this way, but I'm going to go have a look anyway because I don't remember. Um, yeah, in a lot of my earlier places of this game, I was kind of like scared of getting caught by Mrs. Norris and stuff, so I gave the game up for a little while and then never got back to it because, like, I'm six years old when I think I got this game, and what do you expect a six-year-old to do? Anyway, so it doesn't look like there's anything there. Um, I can't see Phil or Mrs. Norris, so that's something, I guess. Although, it probably means Mrs. Norris is gonna... What? She's stuck in the bookcase. I don't get it either. I'm gonna have a... I'm just gonna look at her for a little while here and see if she goes anywhere. Because she's usually prowling around, and it looks like she's stuck in the bookcase. Well, I guess that's good for me. Um, maybe when another cutscene activates, she'll get unstuck or something like that, so... Okay, so we're gonna be knocking over another thing. I wonder what Madame Pince is gonna say when she comes back to the library tomorrow morning and finds half the bookshelves knocked over. <sighs> oh, I'm really headless Nick. I do like what they did with Nick in this game more than in the other Harry Potter games. Like, Chamber of Secrets, he was just there to, like, 
show you one little thing in the beginning, and Prisoner of Azkaban, he wasn't there at all, and Goblet of Fire, he wasn't there at all, and I think Lord of the Phoenix, he wasn't there at all, and after that I didn't get the games because they were pretty bad at that point. Alright, so he's going to be going and uh, showing us the way, like, Nick actually has a perper in this, in this game, have you noticed? Like, he's sometimes shows up and explains the save book, or shows you how to get out of the library, even though you could probably figure that out on yourself, and yeah, that was most of the up there. Um, yeah, Nick is actually up in this game. Alright, so... Phil, you sound like you're having hairball or something, which... I don't know. He's, he's substituting Mrs. Norris for having a hairball or something like that. Alright, anyway, so... Let's see, across this thing... Um, falling off the bookshelves, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I see Cat over there. I'm just gonna pretend, um, she's not there for a little while. Um, hmm. Let's see, all right, over here, and over here, and, um, yeah, Nick can walk through the gate, like, literally walk through the gate, um, but we can't, so it's a bit of a shame. Um, uh, Mrs. Norris should be showing up here sometime, ah, uh, that her behind me? Let's, uh, I fell off. <sighs> Shut up, Filch. Yeah, this feels like a pretty good time to do a video edit. Okay, we are up here once again. Um, we are above the main part right now. I had to go and do all that climbing and glitchy jumping all over again, so it's not the way I prefer to spend my evening, but okay. Nero Headless Nick, he's still there. Fortunately, I didn't actually get caught by Mrs. Norris, so um, I didn't have to reset from the save book or anything, so... Yeah, that's something I don't... Where, where's that cat now? Are you... She's probably stuck in a bookcase again. Alright, anyway. Um, not falling off this time. Coming through this gate, open gate... Open gate thing. Um, and Nick has disappeared, so he's probably gone off to, like, haunt some other random library place or whatever. Um, over there, there's nothing. That's the gate that Philip has been guarding and hoping no one gets through, but unfortunately he didn't notice that something, um... Another gate was open, so that's a shame. And what have we here? Wow. Reflected in the mirror of Erised were Harry's parents, James and Lily Potter. Harry stared hungrily back as though hoping to fall right through the glass and reach them. He was startled when a voice sounded behind him. Harry turned slowly about. So you, like hundreds before you, have discovered the delights of the Mirror of Erised, said Professor Dumbledore. He went on to explain that the mirror showed nothing more or nothing less than the deepest, most desperate desire of our hearts but that it would give neither knowledge nor truth. The mirror of Erised will be moved to a new home shortly, Dumbledore went on, adding ominously that if Harry ever came across it again, he would be prepared. But prepared for what, thought Harry. Filthy whelps gave us the slip, Mrs. Norris. I've locked the only door out of here for the sake of me nerves. Stay here and watch the library for a bit, my dear. You and your infernal shortcuts. So, um, I said this a couple of times in this playthrough and other places, but like, if you aren't familiar with the storyline of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone or whatever you want to call it, you'd really be lost as to where the plot's going and stuff. And that's a pretty good example. They blew through what was like half of a chapter in the book and like a couple seconds worth, and yeah, that that was like the bare minimum you could do. Like Harris's mirror, Harris's dead parents. That's a little bit weird. Dumbledore comes up and tells him it's gonna be. Yeah, <clears throat> I wish they'd at least put a, a little bit more into that cutscene there, but whatever. All right, so we're going to be moving on. Oh, by the way, has anyone noticed like that? 
mirrors in video games, like how they're um, rendered is a little weird. Like sometimes they kind of look flat if you look into them. But this this one I seem to be pretty good about. It. I seem to actually like. A, I, I don't know what exactly what they would do. I haven't I've messed around with video game programming, as some of you know, but I haven't really done mirrors. And it looked like they actually had like a duplicate version of the um, the library map inside the mirror, and they were showing it because the way you like you could see the perspective and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna stop talking about that because I don't know what I'm talking about at all, and that's. Thrones errors and stuff like that. Way to go, Harry. What you could have done if you didn't fall off like me is you could have jumped across a couple of the beams on the ceiling and picked up a couple of beams, but um, yeah, at this point in the game, you shouldn't be strapped for those, so that's not too important. So, what you have to do here is that door is barricaded by like massive 50 pound weights or something like that. Um, Philip and Mrs. Norris are going to be patrolling both sides of this weird room thing over here. I don't know what the heck this is supposed to be, like, classroom or whatever. Um, you can move the weights by, um, hitting these buttons with his, with these Wingardium Mobius of things. Uh, it is noisy, so that probably will attract some unwanted caretaker and feline attention, but just be patient with, um, and keep an eye out for where they are, unlike me, who's just going and running around all over the place. And you should be fine. Um, let's see, that would be two. This is three over here. It doesn't matter what order you hit these in, as long as you do it. Um, hmm. That is that. I'm trying to do this quickly as to, like, minimize the duration of the video. Um, and actually get out of those little things before that dude comes along. Alright. Excuse me while I edit something. And that is that exactly where we were the last time. Actually, I don't even remember. I might have hit them in a different order, but they're all the same, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep take a good wash for Phillips this time, so that doesn't happen again. Uh, I almost saw that crack in the floor of Mrs. Moss, alright. So this will be number four. You can do that. You can get out of there before the cat comes. The door's completely free now, alright, so it doesn't matter. Um, the cat's not going to come, she's going to go over to the door to guard it. And we have to go through that. So, great, they're standing right in front of it. And why, why are we zooming in on Oh yeah, that's fine. As long as he's been to the rest of the game, he's actually helping us out a little bit here. Um, yeah, so he, Phillips is going to go chasing after him. Uh, he's going to completely abandon the place. Um, I think this is Nora's going to go off too, so... Uh, this is Nora's going to say that, alright, so... Uh, we just have to go and hit that, get her attention. Um, yes, she has gone through the doorway, and we can go through like a normal person. Alright. So, that's that. Um, we are almost done here, except for one more thing. Who could that music be? Eh, it's those two again. Alright. So, that's George or Fred, or I don't even know, because they like to mix up their sweaters with the F and G in the middle there, so... Um, I'm gonna guess that's George, because I'm assuming they've messed with the sweater so that people can't keep them straight. But, that's just a guess, so there, he's gonna go and hit a switch in the wall, hmm. So even Hogwarts has its, like, secret button panel thing, and whatever. Um, alright, I have no idea where we are. From George, I have no idea I'm here, this can't end well, can it? Um, we are going to, where are we going, hmm. Alright, which of the four founders of Hogwarts is responsible for building this place in? I'm guessing it was Gryffindor. Gryffindor's already seemed to be a bit of a troublemaker. Alright. <clears throat> so. Alright, so they see me now. I took off my cloak. Yes, I do have 25 beans, but behind you... Yeah, I guess that's where the gnomes go when they steal stuff from you. Um, I can't believe that Fred George didn't see that before and how I had to point it out, though. Anyway, so we are going to get a wizard card. So, in case you've been wondering where it is for this area, uh, it's extremely late in this area, and, um... Don't worry about missing it or anything, because it's pretty hard to miss, because it's kind of like part of the cutscene thing. Uh, let's see, we are going to run into that, we are going to pan the camera really weird angles- Oh my god! 
over fences and stuff, as I was saying, really weird angles. And, um, alright, it's not a face paint, it's, it's not a face plant glitch, but that's, that's something. Alright, so I think we are done here. Fred and George are happy, they shouldn't be stealing any more beans from us. Although, once again, as I say every time I show up, it's pretty worth giving them beans for the cutscene at the end. Um, even if the cutscene at the end isn't, like, directly influenced by giving them beans. Actually, it kind of is, because it depends on getting all the wizard cards, but technicalities are. Right. So, I think that is it for this part of the Harry Potter and the for Stone playthrough, so I hope you all enjoy that. Um, this looks a lot like the Gryffindor Tower thing. Um, in the Chamber of Secrets, so rate, comment, subscribe, watch some other videos I've uploaded, and see you later.